Hello, Michael Bull here with the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're at the second annual Seniors Housing Southeast Conference put on by Interface Conferences, part of uh, France Media. Just ran into Dana Wolchlager with Planet Moran, Planet Moran Living. Plant Moran. Plant Moran Living. Living Forward. Okay. Plant Moran Living Forward. Living Forward. Okay. Yep. And you guys were just on a panel uh, speaking to the entire group about technology and what are one of the things that you're hearing from operators and developers that, that they're finding a challenge today? Yeah, the clients that we work with um, the, the, on the senior living side, the, the largest challenge that they're facing is the shrinking margins. And the shrinking margins are tied to the clients or the residents that are moving in with higher acuities. And their inability to um, meet the margins for the investors and doing so by pricing their services correctly as compared to their costs. I mean, historically on the on the senior living side, you know, we've priced our services based on what ABC property down our the competitors, road. competitors, right? Right, exactly. And XYZ property is doing. And, and, you know, that's worked for us. But, mm -hmm. but as these margins continue to shrink, um, we have to get smarter about how we're delivering services to our residents. And so one of the things that we try to do uh, is, is to help our clients really view their business as a business and, and a cost center and to break it down to simple cost accounting. And, and the way I, I explain it to our clients is, you know, look, do you, do you think that McDonald's doesn't know how much it costs to put a pickle on a hamburger? Right. You bet they do. They know what fraction of a penny it cost to put that pickle on a hamburger and so I ask you how much does it cost you to deliver one medication to Mrs. Jones and the answer is um, I, I don't know and so the reality is is we need to know so that we can make sure that we're making our investors happy or our board of directors happy and we are managing those margins to the extent that we can and so Okay, and it's important to know those numbers, right, when you're in the planning process, when you're talking about developing a project, Correct. or you've got an existing project. So what phase do you guys get involved? Well, we get involved right right at the very beginning. Um, we start out with our clients with a, a market feasibility analysis. I mean, obviously, you know, we get phone calls all the time saying, hey, I got a really nice piece of property, and I think it'd be great for senior housing. And I say, really? Based on what? Well, I think it would be really good. Okay, let's start with a market study. So we, we always start with a market feasibility report with our clients, and then we will move into financial feasibility. And more often than not, our clients um, will make a mistake um, by going immediately to an architect and saying to the architect, so this is what I want on this site, and this is what I think I should build, and this is what I can operate. And the architect starts drawing. Do you know the best project that an architect can do is the one that never gets in the ground? Because right. <laughs> they're constantly getting paid for what they're doing right. and then clients will come to us and say okay Dana this is what we want to do uh, you know is it going to work and I said well did you start with a debt capacity analysis maybe that's where we should have started instead of with the architect because now John has fallen in love with the plan yeah. and it's ten dollars ten million dollars more than he can afford right. so we do the financial feasibility and then of course we can help our clients with um, construction and architect contract management owners rep services and then most importantly based on the thing that we were initially talking about is the operations and that's really what is going to um, make any project continue to move forward right and it's important and like you said that feasibility to know really what's going to work there like we sold a site in Atlanta uh, for assisted living and and um, they didn't build near as much as they could have built on that site because it really wasn't feasible. So there's four different areas where you guys are actually coming in and helping operators and developers, right? Correct. In the, so in the development phase mm -hmm. and in the well, the, the feasibility. feasibility stage and then also on the operations right, side. Operations. And, you know, that that is not an uncommon problem. You know, maybe maybe they get a market study that says, you know, we've got demand for 200 units, but the site constraints are such that they, they can only put 100 units on the right. on that site. And so, you know, we will do, um, we will help our clients find additional sites. Mm -hmm. We will help our clients find additional pocket markets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have clients that come to us and say, you know, we really would like to get into the Columbus market, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio. And uh, can you find me five locations where there's going to be demand and mm -hmm. so we can zero in by zip code exactly where the demand is for the product type that they want to develop so if they say you know our prototype is 70 units of assisted living and 20 units of memory care we can zone in on that right into specific pocket markets fantastic can you come back to my office and just live there yes okay. <laughs> yes i'd love to help you <laughs> okay now what if i have a, a site and i'm one of those uh, brokers that say 
I know it's perfect for senior living. Uh, what would be an estimated price range to come in and do a feasibility study on an existing site? Sure. So we, we have two market feasibility analyses that we do. We do a very high level, and then we'll do a full market feasibility study for our clients. I always tell our folks to start out with a high level. You don't need to pay me 20 grand to do the, the full market feasibility if there isn't demand to begin with. So typically a high level market feasibility study will um, cost around ten to twelve thousand dollars and we will identify specifically where um, the demand is coming from um, based on age and income qualified residents that would be eligible to move into your organization. Okay. And you're looking at competitors and you're estimating uh, revenues? We, we can do that, you bet. Okay. We can say, you know, this is the average rent that they're getting in a typical assisted living one bedroom apartment. Um, and then we use that information as we slowly move into the financial feasibility piece to put together some very high level benchmark financial feasibilities. If you can't, if you can't get it to pencil with a benchmark pro forma, you're probably not going to be able to get it to pencil any other way. So let's start there because that's always kind of worst case scenario. Okay. What's the biggest question you get from operators or what that might surprise some of the uh, viewers? Oh, wow. Well, recently, um, because everybody wants to get into this industry, um, the biggest question we get is, where should I go? Where should I build? And my response to them is, well, how do you feel about regulations? How much money do you have to spend? Um, you know, what type of housing and services do you want to provide? I mean, there's a whole host of things that we need to back into in order to give them that answer. Once we do that, then we can hone in and say, okay, we think the San Antonio market is ripe for you. We think the Atlanta market is good and go to Minneapolis, St. Paul. You know, so that that's often the question. Where do we start? Yeah, that's excellent. And I guess a lot of lenders like to see uh, your analysis in a package, right? Oh, a absolutely. And and you know, because of the the recent financial crisis, um, you know, lenders are coming to us. They want us to validate. You know, as a tax audit and accounting firm, you know, they feel comfortable um, with the numbers that we're providing and the validation tied to it. But the other thing that they want to make sure that our operators have is not only you know good consultants that can drive the process, but they want a really good on a new construction, they want a really good architect that's done senior living. They want a really good general contractor that's had success in building senior living because it's a lot different than traditional multifamily. And you absolutely have to have a proven operator. If you don't have a proven operator and, and the other components, they're not even going to look at your package. They don't care what the margins look like. They're right. not going to look at it. Right. And those are things the investors in the project don't want to look at as well. Exactly. I, and especially as an investor, I want to see the feasibility from a third party. Right. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right, so where can our listeners and viewers get more information about your services? Sure, um, pmlivingforward.com. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. Dana, thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me. I All right, Michael it. Bull with the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R E A L N E X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit excelligent.com. That's X C E L I G E N T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit commercialsearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.